Sarmiento by now, Team Elite by Celia, California. Hi, my name is JC Llamas, AKA the Leg Lock Monster. I'm fighting out of Bakersfield from Llamas Competition Team and South Valley Jiu Jitsu. In this fight, my biggest advantage is probably my height. Uh, I think I got like a good like half foot on him. So uh, for striking, that's an advantage. And I, I think on the ground, it's an advantage for me too, just having longer limbs and to set up my moves with. The fans, they're gonna see every time what they see when I fight. A lot of crazy kicks, a lot of emotions, a lot of um, a big show, good show. JC Lamas is a 500 fighter who has never been finished in victory. He has shown his ability to stop fighters with punches as well as submission. Tonight, he's going to look for to get back above the 50-50 mark with a win over the very experienced Kenny Ento. This is a tall, a tall task for JC Lamas. Ento's a guy that we've seen a variety of times here, take fights on short notice, has a wealth of experience, but Lamas says, you know what? I want to make a statement here. I want to fight a guy that has been here a few times. If Lamas gets this win tonight, uh, Javi, it, it really says something about where he's at in his career. I, I mentioned he's a 5 500 fighter, uh, but he's fighting a guy with a wealth of knowledge. If he gets past Kenny Ento, I mean, this says a lot about him, even though he is a four and four fighter. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely has, it doesn't have the, the, the advantage in experience here. Kenny Ento has 22 fights to JC Lamas' eight fights. So it's, it's going to be interesting. But you know what? Sometimes experience doesn't matter. It all depends on the experience you have in the room, training with the right people, getting the right training partners. It doesn't really matter. But man, it all depends on how he handles the nerves. If he's com confident and comfortable with the nerves, ultimately that experience doesn't really matter. Solid stuff uh, from JC Lamas for taking this fight. Kenny Ento is a, a stalwart here at Tachi Palace Fights. We've seen Ento take fights on very short notice and see, seen him do a variety of things. So uh, I'm curious to see how Lamas really prepared for Ento because Ento's a guy that we actually chastised Mark Lawley one time for standing uh, Ento up on Buddy Wallace when Ento had the back of Wallace. And Ento actually asked to be stood up. I mean, uh, you never know what you're going to get with Kenny Ento. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, uh, that was an interesting fight here. Let's see how uh, J.C. Lamas does here against a guy who's got a tremendous amount of experience. Sometimes that plays, you know, some guys, especially if they have a few losses, they kind of go in there very loose and they got all this experience. And sometimes these guys that are 500 fighters are the most dangerous guys you can fight because they don't care. They have nothing to lose. They're doing it just for fun. Sometimes, they, and then they end up fighting very, very well because of it. The Dragon Kenny Ento is a special breed of fighter. He has no issue stepping up on short notice, taking catch weight fights, and even agreeing to fight against opposition much heavier than he. For me, a signature performance was that fight with Buddy Wallace that uh, put Ento behind the eight ball weight-wise and preparation-wise as the welterweight took the middleweight on in just a few days' notice. Uh, while Ento lost the contest by decision, it was a fight that saw Kenny nearly put the lights out of Wallace with a vicious left hook. Ento generally is an underdog. He should be the favorite tonight based on his experience alone. But uh, as I mentioned, both guys are 500 fighters. Really, both guys uh, can make a statement here tonight with a victory. And again, for my money, Kenny Ento, not a guy that is on the cusp of going to a Bellator or a UFC, but he's a guy that when you come to Tachi, if he's on the card, you go, oh, Kenny Ento's fighting? I want to see that fight. He's a, to me, he's a journeyman fighter. He, he's tough, he's rugged, he's gonna be well-rounded, he's gonna hit you hard, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be able to absorb damage. It's just a tough, well-rounded mixed martial artist. And those guys, I mean, if you're coming up, yeah, you need a, a test like Kenny Ento to, to get you to the next level, but if you're like a mid-level guy, these guys are the worst guys, guys, worst kind of guys you can fight because they're tough, they're rugged, they sure. don't stop coming at you, I mean, they're well-conditioned, they train with a good camp, just not fun. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Kenny Ento will enjoy a bit of a reach advantage. 6-2 to Yamas's 5-9. Both weighed in at the welterweight limit of 170. Uh, Ento, three years the elder of Yamas, and we see the 500 records there with the experience head going to Kenny Ento. Let's go up to Tyson Johnson for our official introductions. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. He represents Lama's competition team and South Valley Jiu-Jitsu with a mixed martial arts record of four wins and four defeats. He hails from Bakersfield, California. Please welcome the leg lock master, J.C. Lamas. 
And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall. He weighed in at 170 pounds. He represents Team Elite with a mixed martial arts record of 13 wins and 13 defeats. He hails from Exeter, California. Please welcome Kenny the Dragon Ento. Your referee for this bout will be Jason McCoy. Jason McCoy getting this assignment. Kenny Ento noticeably uh, absent is his uh, kind of trademark fro. Trying to be a little more aerodynamic. It's possible. And we're underway. Yamas in the blue, Ento in the long black shorts. The shorter hair does help you a little bit, I think, for MMA, no question about it. Having longer hair to me is a hindrance. I just always thought uh, guys with longer hair, when, when the plum clinch is applied to them, some they inadvertently grab a hold of some some I, hair. I used to have the ugliest goatee known to man, and I remember when I was growing that thing out, when it was kind of getting longer. I mean, any time a guy would guillotine or try to choke you, it's just ripping hairs out. And I just, man, I'm like, forget that. It's no fun. No fun. I think uh, even all the adrenaline in the world can't help you uh, squirm a little bit when you get hair pulled. Yep. We see Ento inside on the clinch here with double underhooks pushing Yamas into the fence. He needs a, a right, there we go, left knee to the, to the, to the thigh there. Watch the takedown here. Whoa, why is he going down to his knee? I think uh, Ento just lost his balance there for a brief moment. Ento needs to be working the left knee, there he goes, to the legs. That's gonna open up that side. See Yamas trying to answer with some kicks of his own, but it doesn't have the power that Ento does in this position. The angle for Ento's right knee is not great. Lamas is uh, ooh, looking to take him down. Oh, Ento almost ends up getting mounted. Back on their feet. Fights have been so good tonight, the production teams had to bring me some uh, coffee for my vocals. You're losing your mind over here. I Santa's. know. My voice, my mind, everything. Kachi Pals fights for you or nothing. It's, but why'd you have to go there? <laughs> we see Yamas getting on top here of Ento settling in the half guard. <laughs> he's, uh, they say he's a leg lock master. That's what uh, Tyson, Tyson uh, Johnson said. See if he drops back for a leg lock here. Very dangerous to drop back on leg locks from the top here in MMA. Going to stand up here by McCoy. I'm not Something's exactly sure on. what happened. Something's going on. The knee pads. Knee pads. Doesn't like them. Interesting. Thinks he might have some sort of a weapon in there. We'll see if there may be some hardware in there. Sometimes knee pads ha no, have a, those don't. a harder brace. Those don't. They're just, they're just pads. They're making them take them off. Haven't seen this very often. I never understood that. What's the big deal about having knee pads or ankle braces? Not really a big well, deal. Well, ankle braces, I wouldn't want to wear an ankle brace if I'm fighting a guy with leg locks in his doesn't arsenal matter. because he grip the, tape. The heel's open, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you wrap the foot, well, that's interesting. one thing. Look at this. There was something underneath the another, knee pad. Another knee pad. Yeah, he's doubling up. That's all it is. He's doubling up. Drawing the ire of the Tachi Palace fights crowd. So he's taking off the bottom ones. They, they, it looks like no, no. Those, oh, okay, uh, so the, those are spandex yeah, pants yeah, yeah. below. They're shorts. Got they're it. long shorts. Similar to something like a Shinya Aoki wears. He should put them back on the ground. That's a good call, but uh, I guess it was an infringement. Uh, so they're they're standing him back up. Ooh, Superman right punch hand. lands by Yamas. Oh, Capoeira! Capoeira kick there by Yamas. Ento needs to be careful. Yamas switching stances. And Ento is sweating up a storm already, so it's gonna be slick. It's gonna be tough for, for Lamas if, if he ends up on his back to, to attack the triangle and the armbar here. Oh, good the uppercut. Half mark here, emphasized by a right uppercut from Kenny Ento. See Ento back inside the clinch. I mean, Ento can get the takedown here if he wants to. With every time that Lamas lifts up his leg, I think Ento wants to keep the fight standing. Lamas needs to underhook here with his left hand first, right hand second. See Yamas back in that position we've seen a couple times and that getting clinched up against the fence and just uh, deciding to stand on one foot. You can sweep out that other foot. Man, I, I know I've done that. I've swept the foot with, uh, say for example, Ento's left leg and then your toes scrape against the fence. Oh, that's not fun. That sucks. 
So you got to be careful. Make sure that when you do it, that you don't do it against the fence. Jason McCoy separates him. Ento looks happy to go back at space. Seen a variety of unorthodox strikes there from Yamas. See if he's got anything else up his oh. sleeve. And there's a spinning backfish. Wild that misses. Yeah, it Ento just kind of smiles missed. that off. Just missed. I might have just grazed him. Oh, uppercut right. Oh, Ento rocked, but he answers. Yamas landed flush with that right and left hook. Watch the knees here from Ento. He's got double underhooks, and Yamas should be getting the heck out of there. And it looks like he's bleeding up a storm. Maybe from the nose, maybe from the eye. Can't tell from here, but there's definitely blood on the chest of Yamas. Excuse me, of the arm of Ento. I, I, I apologize. And, and, and Ento is sweating up a storm here. Very difficult. The only place I, I, I like to be when a guy's that sweaty is on their back because it makes it that much easier to get the choke underneath the chin when they're that sweaty. But aside from that, everywhere else pretty much sucks. It's an it's amazing so amount slick. of perspiration here. If yeah. Just four minutes in. I yeah. mean, he doesn't have that fro to soak it up anymore. He did a good job of hydrating himself after weigh-ins. Shade over 35 seconds here in round number one remains. He should be throwing right knees to the head here, Anto should, or, or at the very least to the body, or he can go left knee to the thigh there. McCoy uh, saw enough of a stalemate there, separates him back. It is slick as snot out there. You see Yamas uh, cut up underneath that left eye it's on the, the eye, brow. It's the eye. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. hard right hand, Superman punch by Yamas. He comes in with a spinning oh, back. Oh, man, a hard left, left there. Ento is eating a lot of shots here. Yeah, Yamas is throwing some very, ooh, nice. He's throwing a lot of unorthodox stuff here. Off, off rhythm strikes, very difficult to predict. Nice takedown nice there take by down Yamas. There. Very unpredictable. Yamas is, is doing an amazing job here. It was another very close round. Uh, I would very lead towards, towards Yamas. Ento had some position there, but it, it seemed like Yamas' strikes were a little bit more effective, a little more clean, a little more harder. Yeah, Yamas is definitely landing the harder, cleaner strikes. But, en but Ento controlled most of the round, I thought. We saw the uh, the knee pad situation there, something that you don't Man, often see. Hard but right hand. Yamas has been coming from a variety of angles. We see that Capoeira kick. He telegraphs that a little bit, but that has to be on Ento's mind going Watch forward. Watch this. I think this is where he throws that. Oh, he clipped him there with the left hook. Or excuse me, right hand. Combination there by Yamas. Yamas still has a lot of firepower here. Ento's punches don't have the seem don't seem to have the same kind of sting. Then do the punches from Yamas. Watch this, boom, spinning back fist and then left hook over the top. So he's throwing the unorthodox stuff and then following up with, with standardized punches and kicks. Just so an amazing night of fights so far here at Tachi Palace Fights 21. We appreciate you joining us live and free on Sherdog.com. The conversation going on Twitter. Use the hashtag TPF21 at TJ DeSantis and at Javier Showtime. See Yamas really trying to wipe his feet, trying to get some traction. Uh, the perspiration is just draining, literally draining, off of Kenny Ento's forehead. See Yamas charging in early, takes the center of the cage. Ento content to Oof. hang on the outside. He eats another right hand. Left hand, left, left hand. hand. My apologies. Man, it's that left hand. Man, he is just reaching. Ento trying to close the distance. Yamas' rhythm is very awkward. Very difficult to pick up on. Yamas cut on the hairline. Oh. Man, look at he's, he's just winging him. He is just winging his punches. We call it the old duck and chuck. He's ducking and chucking. Kind of a standoff here. Kenny Ento just saying, all right, I'm here. Come get me. Ento's looking to counter, but Yamas, oh boy. Yamas landing a hard shot there. Hammer fist. Hammer fist again. Ento looking to fade a little bit. Yamas turning up the heat. He's McCoy's going, got the mouthpiece, I believe, of Kenny Ento. He's going, uh, Ento going after a leg lock against the leg lock master. See what he can do with it. Ento trying to fish, he, he bails on guard. it. Bailed, goes, gets back to Yamas guard. says, let's go back to the feet. Yamas is a bloody mess, but he's the one landing the harder, cleaner shots. The good thing about the cut and the blood on Yamas is it's coming from the hairline, draining down the side of his face, not getting into, uh, into his eyes. We're gonna stand him up here in a second. Yamas ah. wants it up. McCoy makes it happen. Kenny Anto taking his time. He's gotta go after him. Yamas Savvy needs the pressure. Oh, Anto's tired. Anto looks tired. 
A good time to go to the body right here, possibly with the left hook to the liver side. Ento is tired. He's got to go to the body. What is Lamas, Yama's waiting for here? He's got to get after him. He can't let him recover here. He's Kenny tired. Ento. He's got to go after him. He's got to go after him. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Kenny Ento looking like Mark Coleman against Petey Williams. Oh. He got a hold of him again. Yamas needs to get out of there. He could go right into the body. Yamas can't. Look how much space Ento's giving him here. Just leaning the weight, trying to get through this round. He still has a long time to go. He's got three, three minutes, minutes left. Yeah, a lot left to go here. He is dead tired. He is dead tired. Yamas needs a right hand underhook here. He, Yamas is not the guy you want to rest against either. I mean, he's been he's been furious with his strikes from a variety of angles. He's got to he's got to know that Ento's tired. And he's got to push a pace. He's got he's to do it. Jason and McCoy hanging out here telling the fighters, you got to do something. You can't just lean on him. Left knee to the body here from Yamas will land cleanly. And, and the more body shots that Yamas throws at him, the better. Kenny Ento's oh, tired. He's, he's, he's done. He's, I, I he, might sit, he wants out. It's yeah, over. He's, he, he's, I'm telling you, he was sweating up a storm. He might have just been dehydrated and completely depleted his body there. He was exhausted. Remember how, remember how much sweat was coming off him? He was exhausted. Yeah. And he uh, was sweating up a storm. An anticlimactic finish to a very exciting fight. There's something wrong with him. I'm telling you, it's dehydration. I guarantee it. I've never seen a fighter sweat that much that quickly. Mm -mm. It's de he's dehydrated. He is exhausted. I mean, he can't even sit down. I think he has got a lot. I think he's overheating. I think he's overheating. They got to put some ice on him right away. Cool him off. They need to cool him off. They need to put ice on his chest, ice on his head, calm him down, get him some water. That's the number one thing. They should be giving him water right now. It is, it is an uncharacteristic performance from Kenny Anto, who's usually very tough, very game, has gone the distance plenty of times throughout his career. His camp is telling him, get up. You gotta help that guy up. I'm telling you, he is overheated and he is dehydrated. I guarantee it. Kenny I'm, Anto might be- uh, I'm no doctor. Kenny Anto might be uh, having a date later on with an IV. Yep. I'm no doctor. I play one in the jiu-jitsu gym, but I am no doctor. But to me, in my, under my professional opinion, I think he's dehydrated and exhausted. Anticlimactic way for J.C. Yamas to win the fight, but he'll take it, and he deserved it. He had to go through hell in this one. A bloody mess is J.C. Yamas, but uh, able to get the job done against the Dragon, Kenny Anto. Let's go up to the official time with Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 42 seconds into the second round, your referee, Jason McCoy, stops the bout due to a verbal tap out for your winner, the leg lock monster, J.C. Lamas. So Yamas gets his record above 500 here. And Kenny Ento falls below 500 in a, in a fashion that he doesn't, he's not. He, he's not he, doing good. No, he's not doing good. It lo looked like maybe he was cramping up there for a mm -hmm. moment too on his exit he, from they, the cage. They better hold him. Yeah, he. Uh, they better hold him. He can't even make the trek down the stairs. Right. Let's take a look at the replay. A lot of action in this fight. Oh, hobby. a tremendous amount of action. And he took some real hard shots from Yamas. Yamas is just throwing everything into it. He kept a ferocious pace. I'm pretty impressed with his uh, conditioning. Yamas was keeping a pretty hard pace. He kept it consistent. He was throwing very, very hard shots. Great job. Ento did a tremendous job himself, but I think he just overheated himself. He blew out the uh, blew out the coolant in his body, blew out all the coolant, all the sweat left his body, and he he did not look good. I'm telling you, he's not doing good. He's going to need an IV. He might even have a slight concussion from those hard shots from Yamas. Yama's very happy with his victory, and that, that's a fight I wouldn't mind seeing run, ran back. Uh, not the way that uh, Yamas wants to win, not the way that Ento wants to fight, but uh, still a pretty exciting fight nonetheless. Featherweight's up next in the Tachi Palace Fights Cage.